Hi everyone, it's Megan Douglas here. Uh, my guest today is an ex Miss Universe, ex winner of Dancing with Stars, an author of two books, an amazing businesswoman. She runs a well being and lifestyle consultancy now. It's my great pleasure to say hi to you, Lorraine, and introduce you to everyone today. <laughs> Hello, Megan. Thank you very much. It's so nice to be here and chatting with you today. Well, look, I, I could talk to you for hours and hours. You are such a woman of wisdom. And I know I've only got, you know, maybe 20 minutes or so today. So I'm going to try and encapsulate some things in the conversation that I know our viewers are going to really be interested in to hear from you. Because to me, you've had such a unique journey. Um, especially around how you've approached what beauty really is, because you've been there at the forefront with Miss Universe. You now run a well-being and lifestyle consultancy, which is a lot to do with the internal thing. So I guess my first question, Lorraine, is how have you experienced beauty changing from those first experiences you had to where you are now? Yeah, I sort of do look back on my life. I'm about to turn 56 in a couple of weeks. And it's, it's been a really big journey and a lot of lessons learned. But when I go back to that sort of beginning of my entry into that whole Miss Universe experience, I was just so young and so naive. And I, I think when I look at beauty back then, it was a very narrow perception of what I think beauty is. Yeah. And as I have lived life and grown myself, it certainly changed. Um, and I think, I think the biggest thing is that I know that beauty is definitely something that is so diverse. Mm. Mm. And for me, beauty is about having a beautiful heart. Yep. Not, not, yeah, not, you know, just what is on the outside. That is, that's probably the biggest thing that I have learned, that um, the diversity, you know, I believe that, you know, I work with women and I've always said that all women are beautiful. Yeah. And in their own unique way but it just doesn't necessarily have to be defined by the outer. It, it, to me, it, it's definitely inequalities, um, the way that a woman is, the way that a woman makes others feel. To me, that's what beauty is. Yeah, I love that. I think the way that if someone walks into a room and they make you feel joyful and relaxed, there's something very beautiful about that, isn't there? And, you, you and, and, and also when you, when you see women who are really connected to who they are, mm. that really shows. You know, you feel it, but you see it in the way that they are. Mm. They have a, um, an inner confidence. You see it in the way that they, they smile. It's a smile that just absolutely vibrates from the eyes. And it's just that inner, inner confidence. To me, that's what true beauty is because they're confident because they know who they are. They know who their true self is. And that's where, you know, um, it begins. You've got to be connected to your inner self. And yeah. that's what I truly believe in and, and what I try and guide my clients to. So I totally agree with you. I mean, you're speaking my language, Lorraine. And I guess the question is, how do we, what, how do we get to find ourselves? I know sometimes it takes experiences. Um, how do we find that inner confidence or who we are inside? Um, mm -hmm. It's not always easy when you're young. We know as we've got older, we've had experiences, but like if you were to give me or us three, t three tips, tricks or habits to have to find yourself and your inner confidence, what, what would they be? Well, I think the first thing is that I do believe that we all have a higher source, okay? And that higher source is in your heart. And that is so important to know that you are part of this 
world as a magnificent human being. We all are. We're all magnificent human beings. That's the first thing. And to connect to that higher source, straight away what you want there is pure love and love for yourself. You've got to love yourself. And you sort of say, well, how do I do that? Well, I love who I am. I'm grateful for who I am to be here on this earth. Yeah. And so it's got to start there. You've got to love yourself. Because if you think that you're going to put things on the outer areas to make you feel confident and beautiful. If you haven't connected to that inner part of you, it, it doesn't work. No, it's true. It doesn't really, really work. So that's really important. And so, you know, connecting with your inner self, connecting with your heart, and straight away, when you do that, you appear and, and look more beautiful straight away. You know, you have that, that inner calm. And so that, that's, a, that's really, really important, knowing that you're a beautiful person, inner. So just believing in that and connecting with your inner source, I would say that that's really important. The other thing is to, to have joy, yeah. to find the joy in your life. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, life isn't easy. You know, when I look back on my life and I've had a lot of things that, big lessons in life. Yeah. But I know that finding your joy again is what you have to do. And so having joy in your life, I think, just makes you, again, be happy. You feel happy. It's all about how you feel. Mm -hmm. And so having joy in your life that's really important. For me, it's my family, it's my friends, yeah. it's being out in nature, it's appreciating, having gratitude for all of those beautiful things in my life. That gives me joy. Also doing, finding out the things that you love doing. It could be cooking, it could be gardening, it could be listening to music, it could be dancing, it could be reading, doing lots of what you love. Mm so that you have that joy in your life. Um, and I just sort of, yeah, I, I think it really is about how you feel. You've got to start there because if you feel, if you say, well, how do I want to feel in my life? Yeah. I, want to, I want to have energy. I want to have vitality. I want to have happiness. I want to have joy. And start by creating those things, finding out how to have those things in your life. Mm. And the beauty thing just flows from that. Yeah, and I think it's just such an important lesson to learn. And I, I mean, I love what you say. Um, and I know you've been through grief in your life. You've experienced loss. And so for you to be able to turn those really difficult emotions and experiences around to being and finding your joy and your gratefulness, I mean, it's a unique gift and, um, you know, uh, like if you were going to say one thing, the most grateful thing, and this is putting you on the spot, that you are, the, what are you most grateful for in your life? What has helped you guide yourself out of the more negative or grief experiences? Mm, oh, it, it goes back to my, my faith in something higher than me, okay. a higher source. Because, you know, Megan, when you are going through those tough times, you are very alone. Even though you sometimes can be surrounded by people, yeah. it's still just you having to basically navigate your grief or whatever challenge it is in your life. Mm -hmm. And so having a faith of knowing that I'm never alone, that I can draw on, I can go whenever to my heart, to my higher source, and know that I'm loved and I'm never alone, that is what has helped me. Yeah. That has given me my strength. That has given me my peace. That has given me my guidance to know I'm going to be okay. Thank you for uh, articulating that. That is really beautiful. <laughs> I yeah. feel the same way. And so that's, that's, that's what saved me. The other thing that has saved me is having wonderful friends. And I have one in particular, and, and it, her name's Patricia. And we've been to school together. So we've known each other very many years. Now, she is one of those friends. And I believe that we all have to have one of these friends. <laughs> and if you have one, you're blessed. 
But it's that friend that loves you unconditionally, that wants the absolute best for you, that is there for you whenever. And she's been in my life and she's been there throughout all of my highs and my lows. And we also share a lot of joy together. We like to laugh. And laughter is another thing that I think is so important in life. Yeah. To be able to laugh. Because when you laugh, again, you feel free. Yeah. And that's to me when, when you see a woman's beauty, when she's joyful, when she's happy. Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, you know, surrounding yourself with really beautiful, loving people is very, very important. What you, you know, the energy of people. And if there's anybody in your life that doesn't make you feel good, then don't have them in your life because energy is a very strong thing. That's a really valid point. And I think it's something that you often learn in your 20s, maybe in your teens, and you suddenly find yourself in an environment which is not conducive to you feeling like that person has got your back or is uplifting you and bringing you joy. So... I think that's one of the major lessons that is to learn in this life. And I sometimes wonder, you know, coming back to that conversation around beauty and social media and what, you know, the projections of what is beauty, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised that this is changing now, but it can be really difficult, can't it, when people feel less than because of what's, what they're seeing there, whether it be social media, so how, how do you navigate that? Because, you know, you, you, you've had this Miss Universe, you've had this thing, we're aging, you're still beautiful. To me, you're more beautiful than ever. Oh how, my God. Yeah. how did you make those choices to navigate this external pressure? Mm. Well, um, first of all, we're all unique. And comparing yourself and wanting to be like someone else is you're setting yourself up straight away because those ideals um, and especially a lot of them on social media aren't real. (laughs) (laughs) And you know, there's a, a lot of things happening there on social media that it's not real. It's not the truth. Mm. And so I just sort of feel that it, again, just being, honest with yourself and going, okay, who am I? And living authentically to your truth. Mm. Not what social media says you should be doing, but living your your own truth. For example, you know, for me, this whole thing about aging naturally, you know, it's a choice. And, you know, we, we're bombarded all the time with these the message that getting older is not a positive thing and that you'll become invisible. And so therefore, you know, you, you, you look tired when you're older. And so therefore, you know, you should be trying to prevent the aging signs. Well, again, it's a choice. And I just, I don't believe that. Mm-hmm. So it's about staying true to who you are. Because when you're true to yourself, that's when you'll be happy and you'll be peaceful. But as soon as you start trying to be what you think you should be doing by what the media is telling you to do, if that's why you're doing it, then you're not going to be happy. But, you know, you just get, when you're, when you're living your life authentically to who you are and what you want to do, not by what you're husband says you should be doing or your boss says you should be doing when you have the courage to do that then you really are on your way of living a life of inner peace and and with that honesty of saying this is who I am and yeah maybe I don't look like that person but that's okay because I am who I am Mm -hmm. and I think that's really really important that's powerful that's powerful and beautiful. And I, look, Lorraine, I really did want to have this talk with you because I've been very fortunate to have these sort of conversations with you a few times in the last couple of years. And I honor your wisdom. I'm sure everybody who's listened to this today is very grateful for what you have shared with us. Um, 
So thank you so much. Is there anything else you'd like to share to our lovely audience today before we say our au revoirs? And <laughs> uh, I just, yeah, no, I, I just feel that um, what I have really learnt over, especially since my husband passed away, is how precious life is. Mm. And when you lose someone that you love, you really know what is important in life. Mm. And all those things that we sometimes can worry about, they're not important. Mm. The most important thing is you and realizing what makes you happy and just going for that, mm. you know, waking up and going, this is my life. Yeah. What do I want to do with it? Yeah. And do it because life is so precious. You never know what's going to happen the next day. Mm -hmm. So life is short. So do the things that you love. Mm -hmm. Do the things that make you happy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and have lots of love in your life. Yes. You know, for me, coming from a place of love or every day, just being grateful and going, I'm so grateful for everything I have in my life. And I come from a place of love. And when you do that, it's amazing how you can navigate your day and what comes to you. It's a great way to start the day, isn't it? Because as you yeah. say, life is short and it's a beautiful adventure and it's here for feeling and expressing and being as much love as you can. And you are a living example of it. So I'm extremely grateful, Lorraine. Thank you so much. Your words have been really heartfelt. Um, it's a choice, Megan. We all have a choice. We all have choices in life. Mm -hmm. So make the choices that are right for you. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to say goodbye now. Bye. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye. Bye.